Well, hello there, YouTube. It is uh, 20 after 1, and I don't think it's clearing off. But anyway, I'm going to go out to the BMW, and I found the little extra key tumblers. The little tumbler keys, I guess you call them. And this is the uh, wallet key or emergency key for the uh, low chassis triple black that is the only thing that fits the bags right now. So i got to re-key. Oh, I need to get the key for the new bike, too. Come on along. Alright, that pulls out of there pretty easy. That's what I was, was saying is these locks, you know, when they're closed, you can't, you have no access to them. But when you open them up, I was able to put the key in and reach back there and push the, uh, the lock, the locking pin, which is that, that top one sitting out there. So when the key is correct, all these tumblers are flush. Now if I take this key out and stick the new key in, one of these is going to be off. So what I need to do is go and find out what number, which ones need to be changed and do it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lock for holding the bags on and uh, the two side bags have a lock going each direction. So you can open the bag from the front or back, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm going through the, the crazy task of doing these tumblers. And as you can see, well, the one that's sticking up is the lock tab. See how they're nice and... Oh, I guess I get it where you can see it, huh? But uh, see how the tumblers are flat? That means it'll fit in there. So this is the key to the new bike. And that's the little emergency key for the old bike. Walk around with that thing in my hand. That is not a, a lockable key. That thing, if I turn it upside down, could fall right out of there. Running around out there with you guys and not paying attention to what I'm doing. You don't get any extra of those. So what I have to do here is use the uh, wallet key from the old bike. And then I got to find the release tab, which is right here on the edge in there. Reach in there with a little, little scribe tool. And it only works with the key in there. You ain't going to get it out any other way. And uh, release that tab, pull the lock out, then go in, pull the tumblers. I got it all written down and coded so I know which ones to pull out and replace. Some of them I just moved to a different position. And some of them I have to use the packet that I showed you and pull out uh, different tumbler numbers to put in there. And then it'll fit the new key and then I come back out here slide it back in the hole and go to the next lock <laughs> anyway I was able to get it in there and release the tab and this is what she looks like when she comes out I see with with the key it's keyed to she's all fancy dancy and ready to rock I'm gonna put you down for a second and then I'm gonna put the the new key in there and you'll see how these tumblers are not flat See, now you can see the difference. See how the tumblers are sticking out? And sunk in in certain places and sticking out on others? That's why you can't unlock that bag with this key. So you got to reset all them tumblers. Almost all of them are at the bottom. But it's the top tumblers that are sunk. So it's doing just weird things. But anyway, I got it all keyed out. Okay, all the locks are... Are installed all eight of them one of the things that I didn't mention is when you're putting those get the key out here putting those tumblers in with each lock you want to turn about halfway and give that thing a good good yank to make sure that that a uh, lock pin on the back of the tumbler is clipped in I've seen <laughs> I've seen it way too many times with different locks where people don't make sure that's clipped in. You get to wherever you're going, the tumbler's just gone, just gone. But uh, yeah, make sure it's locked in. And when they pop out, uh, you just say all the pieces go everywhere. So I'll do I'll try to do as quick as I can a little um, deal on on the display here. We'll talk about that briefly. Okay. Let me see how fast I can go through this thing. So you have a menu button that goes up and down. And this, this helps navigate through. So does the, uh, the smart wheel. You have scroll up and down. And you have move right and move left. 
So if I want to get into um, the first, well, I'll show you first thing, the status line, the status line across the top. Give it a, a quick little press and it'll switch to, I've got everything turned on. So trip one, trip two, consumption one, consumption two, um, trip time one and two, uh, break time, 118 hours and one minute break, uh, break time two, um, I don't recall, I think this is like total trip time or something, tire pressure monitors, oh, I didn't have the thing on the screen, but um, those won't pull up until the wheels spin, the centrifugal force uh, wakes the uh, monitors up, and then back to uh, range, but um, you know, I, I usually leave it on either the range or the uh, the gas pump thing there. But anyway, uh, one press down of the button will bring us into the menu selection. Okay, up here, what well, I'll show you what uh, what we got displayed. There's your miles per hour. So if you're in this, you can still see what speed you're going, and this is telling you what the speed limit is as far as it can tell um, this is the mode that I'm in that's the mapping mode and I can switch between dynamic it's not gonna let me switch because it's not oh there it is enduro pro rain road dynamic pro which I like enduro pro rain when it's wet oh man you can just it's amazing how well you can ride these things in rain mode so uh, and then of course I'm in neutral alright and then I got my vehicle and I switch down one more time down on the mode button and you have uh, my vehicle and here's all your stats anything in green is showing that everything is cool anything that's white is telling you there's no information on it or it's a uh, you know, yeah, there's no oil pressure because it's not running, no tire pressure because they're not on. Uh, they can go orange when things are high or low. It goes red when things are critical. So green is telling you everything's okay. White is telling you it's not monitoring it. And then this is the onboard computer, which you can, uh, I can reset all that. But I'll, I'll do that after, uh, oh, I can reset individual values. Ah, look at that break time I'll just zero that out anyway um how I'm I'm moving left and right with this switch I'll show you I'll move back and it kicks me back one and then once I'm in this screen it'll scroll between uh, the different items in there tire pressures there's when the service is due there's the annual service now how many miles until the first official service um, that's monitored now it still needs a, a service between five and seven hundred miles we just tell everybody six just because a lot of the Japanese stuff is that and that's in between it's just easy to remember so scrolling back you'll see that as I'm moving the wheel it's it's switching between screens so there's all your computer stuff there and you'll notice when there's something I can select more See that little icon right there, the weird little down icon? That is the down icon here. All right. And then so from here, I can switch back up and get into my main screen. Now this is the navigation. Okay, I'm going to press the mode button down. And uh, from here, I can now I'm going to roll the wheel to scroll up and down. Um, there's different it doesn't I don't think it actually shows you a map but I can uh, I can find different things through here and it will use the app the phone app which is kind of kind of basic and I do mean really basic you got a little map here rides that you've saved more is different download maps and whatnot but anyway this is just kind of running in the background but uh, I can set up routes and whatnot through here and there's all kinds of different um, updating food and drink sites and museums let's just pull something up here landmark attraction how about a museum no entries found <laughs> I am kinda of in the middle of nowhere 
All right, so let's uh, South County three. Let's wow. Oh, landmarks and attractions. So anyway, you pull this thing out, and it'll calculate, you know, what to do here. Now I can end this route by just clicking out of it. Pretty cool stuff though. So it'll, and if I have my headset paired to this, I'll hear voice prompts all the way through. I have to tell you, I, I probably will never use this navigation feature. Um, that's just me. I, I'll, I look at that to see where I'm at and I use my phone for navigation. If I know I'm going somewhere where I'm not going to have cell service, I will use the navigation. But that's, I gotta tell you, that's pretty rare. So I just clicked up. It just you're just moving through the menu or the menus, and you just keep moving. You know whether you go up, down, left, right. Uh, media. I have to have uh, a headset paired to it. The phone again. I have to have a headset paired to it, like my Cena. And then you have your settings down on the menu, and I can scroll using the smart wheel up and down. And uh, you got all kinds of stuff. This is where. I can decide what shows up on that um, status line and I will turn a lot of these off I just left everything on to show you guys speed limit info that's what this little box is once I get moving it'll it'll display that and it'll remember where you're at uh, let's uh, date and time units of measure so you got all your you know depending on what country you're in you can easily switch all that stuff back and forth language again depending on your country and anyway this thing's just endless scroll back and I usually leave it in this mode if I'm in here that's where it comes back when I come back it stays it remembers where you were last so this is the main screen so you know this is a speed you know that's it's gonna tell you what the speed limit is if it can determine it there's my phone it's saying that my phone is connected there's my battery status there's my cell status that's the time that's the ambient temperature inside this garage that's what mapping mode I'm in that little icon there is telling me that the pro chip is installed in the bike it's a coding chip so if I want to switch to where I'm I want the smart wheel to manipulate the uh, GPS you can see the little up arrow it's very faint but you push up and it'll switch and now I have control over navigation alright so and then I push and hold down she switches back to the TFT display pretty cool stuff this when the end you notice how this is all red red line is not going to be at what 53 5400 RPMs you can see it moving around as the engine warms up the red line increases on the engine. This thing monitors the oil temperature. And as oil temperature increases, it allows me to rev the bike at a higher higher RPM. Um, I think the highest I see is around 9, I think it is, is what I normally see. And then this will become yellow. And there's different colors meaning different things here. If I red line the bike and it goes into the rev limiter, the whole dash will flash. But you can see that thing's moving around as it's monitoring the uh, the oil temperature. That's some pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? So, that's that. That's just a quick one. I'm still learning about the display. So, uh, don't take everything I say to heart. Because, uh, you know, I've got a lot to learn myself. This is just what I know so far. And I'll probably do a comprehensive review. You know, with a little more details and a little more facts once I... Uh, once I get used to it, and I'll probably do that over on the Motorflog channel. And now that I turn the key on, I gotta do that weird reset thing of my of my charger. You can't just plug a charger into these things. I've gone over that several times in other videos. So anyway, there's a quick little uh, FYI or whatever you want to call it on the uh, TFT display. Lots of info there. I still have lots to learn. All right, so I did a little trick of. Have the bikes on, you plug in and do all the deal and you can see the battery charger because I had the key on for a bit is now uh, laying the coal to the battery. Very weird, but it functions great. You just got there's an order that you gotta turn it on. <laughs>
BMW does not want you hardwiring a charger to the battery and connecting to it. Big, big no-no. Huge no-no. They, they beat that thing up at school talking about that. Do not do that. Well, hello there, YouTube. And welcome to a kickback, really lazy Sunday. Mm -hmm. Felt absolutely fantastic. Actually, I didn't do a whole lot of kicking back, actually. There's just nothing, no rush on anything. I was answering a bunch of emails and comments and got those, man, those stupid locks re-keyed. Man, that's so tedious. And it's just one of those things you just don't ever feel like you're making any progress on it, you know. Just clunking away at it. But um, anyway, it's a lot of fun. Wonderful day. Still, I haven't even watched my MotoGP race. I probably won't even get to it. I know, you need to watch yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, relaxing day. Crazy, the weather said, you know, a.m. clouds and p.m. sun. Never sun happened. Never came. Never came. Nope. That fog was thick enough that it just always it just had that kind of a misty feeling all day. Yeah, through. it's all gray and just kept... Shh, that but that's mist. cool. You get, you get a lot of other little weird things you wouldn't normally get done, done. Yes. So, it's, in the end, it was a fantastic day. I had a good day. Yeah, very, very relaxing. I knew I'd like it. <laughs> well, the little woman's got, got food about ready to hit the table there, so we're going to have to make this one a, a real short one. Yes, don't want dinner to burn. No. No. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give her a thumbs up, and you guys have a wonderful Monday or Tuesday. Heck yeah. That's right. it. That's it. All right. Week starts, well, actually, today's the first day of the week, yeah. but work week starts tomorrow. Yep. All right. I'll be down there all by myself again. I know. I'll come visit. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. You guys going to visit, too? You, you guys come along. I think I forced them to visit, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you guys. Oops, sorry. sorry. Thank you guys very, very much now. You guys have a good night. Yep. Bye-bye now.